Something big is brewing for Bitcoin. Over the last 48 hours, we've seen Bitcoin aggressively move to the upside against equities and alongside gold. We've seen Novogratz and JP Morgan coming out and saying that they are expecting a Bitcoin spot ETF approval by the end of year. Just last week, we saw Larry Fink came out and call Bitcoin a flight to quality asset. We saw Grayscale and BlackRock filing amendments. Gary being sheepish read the ETF in the latest interview and the US session is now leading the bidding. What a whirlwind week we've had for crypto. So in today's video, I want to break down some of these points and try and work out what exactly is happening with Bitcoin and what could potentially happen next. By the way, you may notice that I'm doing a video on Banter Plus. Usually I'm live on Crypto Banter. So if you aren't subscribed to the Banter Plus channel yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell because next week, I'm going to be uploading videos exclusively on Banter Plus. So I'm not uploading on Crypto Banter. I'll be uploading on Banter Plus. If you want to view that content, you'll need to be subscribed to Banter Plus. So click the subscribe button. We're going to be uploading a bunch of content here. We have big plans for this channel. And yeah, come support us over here and make sure you don't miss a single video. Let's get straight into the video. The first thing I want to draw your attention to here is the Bitcoin performance versus the Nasdaq, gold, and the S&P. You can see over the last two weeks, Bitcoin has started an upwards trajectory against the stock market, which has actually started to pull back. Interestingly, gold has been upticking alongside Bitcoin, and we can see in response to that, the Bitcoin Pearson correlation with gold has been increasing aggressively versus equities, meaning Bitcoin over the last 30 days is becoming more correlated with gold than it is with equities. And this is due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, the Bitcoin spot ETF approval speculation is in full force. I think an approval is obviously a massively bullish thing for crypto, but there's a lot of speculation speculation pre-ETF, which is causing a bid for Bitcoin. And I also think this flight to quality narrative is now starting to assert itself uh, amidst geopolitical concerns worldwide. And although this hasn't historically lasted the distance, like Bitcoin has gone on to become a risk asset despite, you know, one to two weeks of our performance in the past, I think the more times that Bitcoin responds positively to macro and geopolitical adversity, the more legitimacy it gains in terms of becoming a digital gold. And although we're seeing this on a small time frame right now. Just think back to the banking collapse earlier this year when Bitcoin rallied from 20k all the way to 31k. That was really the narrative propelling itself. This is something that's starting to assert itself in the market again today. So that's one interesting thing to note. Another interesting observation that I made when I was flicking through the Artemis terminal here is that Bitcoin over every single time frame on Artemis has actually outperformed equities and gold. So 10 years, you can see Bitcoin outperforms. Over three years, you can see Bitcoin outperforms. One year, year to date, three months and one month, Bitcoin is your best performing asset, which is pretty crazy to me. Considering most people think Bitcoin is an extremely risky asset. Yes, it's more volatile than the stock market. Its returns and risk adjusted returns are actually higher than the stock market. Now, of course, you could nitpick periods like, for example, the five year window might be down versus the stock market because you might hit a bull run peak. So it does depend on when you're looking at this data, of course, because that's going to change the start date. But I just thought it was an interesting observation that sitting here in October 2020, 23, that across all time frames on Artemis, Bitcoin is actually up versus equities and versus gold. I think gold slightly outperformed in the three month time frame, but Bitcoin outperformed equities. So that's one thing that's happened. Bitcoin has started to decorrelate. Of course, Larry Fink came out and called crypto a flight to quality. It's funny, the second that he came out and said this, crypto actually started decoupling from equities. So I don't think it's necessarily him propelling the narrative, but it was another major figure coming out and giving legitimacy uh, to this theory. So despite what the underlying motives are, I don't think you can deny it's a good thing, at least when big public hedge fund managers, BlackRock, the world's biggest asset manager, um, the CEO comes out and speaks glowingly of crypto. It's really in stark contrast to how these people used to talk about crypto five to six years ago, but that's how far we've come in terms of the growth of this industry. James Seyfart, a Bloomberg analyst said, look, all I mean is if you came to me six months ago and told me that Larry Fink will do multiple national television appearances where he preaches about the virtues and benefits of Bitcoin and crypto more broadly, I probably would have laughed at you. Yet, 
here we are. Now, all of this recent bullish news has actually culminated in the US session outperforming. So if you look in the bottom right corner here, you can see this graph which details the Bitcoin cumulative return by session across the US, Europe, and APAC, which is Asia Pacific. Three months ago, you can see that the US was lagging Asia and Europe in terms of cumulative performance per session. But over the last couple of weeks, the US session has actually been leading the market. So you are seeing more of an increased interest in US circles. And this is also being fueled by a lot of spot buying compared to Europe and Asia over the past few weeks. And this has led to a bit of speculation of who is buying. And of course, we can't answer that. But due to the CVD data we have, we can see that a lot of this is being fueled by spot buying, which means there could be some big players starting to position themselves. Whether it's BlackRock, like some people are saying, you know, we can't confirm nor deny. It's all speculation at this point, but we do know there are serious parties getting interested in Bitcoin around this whole spot ETF. So in terms of the spot ETF, what is happening? Well, we saw Mike Novogratz come out and say he thinks an ETF will be approved this year in 2023. We saw JP Morgan also come out and said they expect a Bitcoin spot ETF to be approved within months. We saw Grayscale filed for an amendment. We also saw BlackRock and Fidelity file for their respective amendments. And that kind of leads to a situation where the probability of a Bitcoin spot ETF approval increases because the fact that they are willing to talk and amend with the SEC gives an indication as to the fact that an ETF will be approved. This implies clear communication between both parties in terms of what amendments are required to make a legitimate claim here. And all this has culminated in James, the Bloomberg analyst, applying a 90% chance of approval by ARK's January 10th deadline for a Bitcoin spot ETF. So we know the first last deadline for an ETF approval is on January 10th, 2024. That is in 82 days time. In the next 82 days, there's a 90% chance of an approval. And a Bitcoin spot ETF does two things. In the short term, it propels this speculative bid into an ETF approval trade. But in the long term, it also gives you these sustained flows from things like pension funds and institutions and broader flows into the Bitcoin ecosystem over like a three, five, 10 year period that currently we don't have. So it's a short term catalyst and it's also a long-term catalyst and i've seen the meme going around bitcoin spot etf approval trade bid bitcoin spot etf approval bid um so basically implying there that it's bullish either way it's a buy the rumor buy the news event unlike some buy the rumor sell the news events of course if things start getting a little too overheated around the time of an approval i think pullbacks are definitely possible in fact i wouldn't just say possible i would say probable and in previous cycles we have seen in pre-halving years we have had major corrections whether that happens in the next couple of months is yet to be seen, but we do know at some point we are going to get a Bitcoin pullback into the next halving. It's not like this spot ETF is going to rally Bitcoin all the way to 100k instantly. I think there's still going to be pullbacks. There's still going to be accumulation opportunities. So if you're sitting on the sidelines now and you're feeling FOMO and we're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not in the market. I don't own, own enough Bitcoin. I definitely wouldn't be panicking. If there's one thing the market has taught me over the last few years, there's always another opportunity around the corner. And in terms of altcoins, they typically don't start outperforming until Bitcoin is well into its next cycle. So you have a lot of time. And although Bitcoin might rally against alts a little bit more than you'd like, if you're holding altcoins, there will be a time where the tide shifts and that's where you are exposed to most of your upside potential. It isn't necessarily in these early stages where you need to panic and you need to worry about missing out because this is actually great. We want Bitcoin to get liquidity. We want Bitcoin to get mainstream media attention because that gives the overall industry legitimacy, thus liquidity. And that does end up siphoning down into other areas of cryptocurrency. So maybe Bitcoin dominance keeps rising for a little bit longer, but it's definitely not a reason to panic. It's actually a super healthy time for the cycle and a phenomenon that we've seen the last two cycles as well. Now I want to talk to you about an indicator that's been causing massive moves in the Bitcoin price. Not many people are looking at this indicator, but it really does end up simplifying the crypto market. And I found it an extremely useful tool to be able to predict upcoming crypto moves, but also quantify past crypto moves. So I'm about to show you that. Just a quick shout out to one of our official show sponsors, KyberSwap. If you do want to level up your trading game, you can use their tool Kyber AI in order to find out whether a coin is bullish or bearish according to on chain indicators. In front of you, you can actually see Bitcoin here. Of course, this video is about Bitcoin. This is the wrapped version of Bitcoin. So it's the token on the ERC 
2020 blockchain. And you can see how people are trading Bitcoin on Ethereum. So you can see the types of cells, buys, sells, the frequency of cells, the trading volume on chain, the net flow to whale wallets, all this sort of really cool on-chain data. And it's super valuable data for smaller altcoins, especially because you can start to get uh, a feel for where momentum is trending in the market. And of course, seeing where momentum is going using the Kyber score here, you can try and see whether a coin is flipping from bullish to bearish or bearish to bullish momentum. And that can be super valuable in terms of lining up confluence with your trades. So there's a link in the description to get early access to Kyber AI. I think it's an amazing platform. And KyberSwap also just launched some of their pools for the Scroll network. So Scroll is a layer two network on Ethereum. It just launched a couple of weeks ago. By the way, I think if you're using the network now, there's a decent chance that there could be an airdrop on the table, a little bit of extra alpha for you. But if you do want to get involved with the network, there are a bunch of pools paying some pretty crazy APRs like ETH USDT here, 75%, Bitcoin ETH, 57%, like just some crazy rewards right now because it's a newly launched network on KyberSwap. And yeah, you can deposit liquidity into these pools if you'd like. Once again, the link to Kyber swap is in the description thought i would mention that considering that is a newly launched product of theirs so i mentioned an indicator that i was looking at and it's very simple bitcoin follows liquidity bitcoin is extremely sensitive to liquidity meaning when central banks are injecting liquidity into an economy bitcoin responds well bitcoin's a sponge when it's raining it soaks up the liquidity and it's a very liquidity responsive asset because it's considered a risk on asset. Even though we talked about earlier that there's a bit of a flight to quality narrative going on right now. Let's be honest, to this date, Bitcoin is and has been a risk on asset. And for that reason, when you do see liquidity injections, Bitcoin responds really well. How do you track liquidity? There are a few ways, but one thing Bitcoin I've noticed has been responding to is not just global liquidity, but specifically Chinese liquidity. So TED Talks Macro made an indicator that I've been using, which essentially tells you when liquidity spikes, what does Bitcoin do? And you can see throughout history, spikes in central bank liquidity in China have resulted in massive Bitcoin rallies. And when they stop injecting money into the economy, Bitcoin tends to correct and crash. Now, China is one of the biggest global economies, clearly is one of the major players in the crypto market, despite how they've limited controls on retail access to crypto. And we can see here, even recently, they, they injected a bunch of money into the economy and Bitcoin also started to pump. So it's pretty crazy how you can line up these injections with Bitcoin pumps um, pretty much every single time. There are some outliers, but in general, it is a trend that you can kind of map out. And I think at the end of the day, to track Bitcoin's macro price performance, what you need to track is liquidity. So there are indicators that you can use for this, uh, the Chinese central bank liquidity being one of them. How many times did I just have to say liquidity just then? In terms of Bitcoin's price action right now, all you need to know is that, in my opinion, until we break above the 30k region and actually hold for a few days, which we haven't managed to do before, we wicked above in April and then we came back down, we wicked above in June and then we came back down, we pretty much couldn't hold for more than a day. When Bitcoin holds above 30k for a few days, then we'll start talking about Bitcoin breaking this damn wall into a bull market where it can go to, you know, 38, 40k, etc. It is possible but it needs to break above and it needs to hold above. Until then, we're technically, although we're in the upper bound of the range, we're technically in a range between 25K and 31K. I know that's boring to hear. It's great. It's a great sign that we've, that we've consolidated above the 200 MA on the daily, but we technically have not broken above this resistance level yet. Do not get bullish into resistance. You can get bullish on a break and a hold or a retest of the resistance newly turned support, but until then, don't get too bullish heading into resistance. Just something to, to keep note of. Before I head off here, I want to give a quick shout out to one of our official show partners, which is Data Ownership Protocol, which recently launched their testnet, enabling you to encrypt assets decrypt assets and choose what data you want to show to the world and which data you want to hide from the world. So it's pretty much following this concept that Vitalik actually outlined in his initial vision for Ethereum, that every user should have full sovereignty and full ownership over their data and what they choose to do with it. This isn't something Ethereum's managed to do. I know they've got some privacy stuff later in their roadmap, but they haven't really been able to execute fully on it yet. DOP is delivering on this vision in 2023 and next year with their token launch in 2024. So I think for next bull run, it's going to be a pretty cool protocol because especially when you're doing a lot of trading, you might choose to show some data to the world. You might choose to hide some data from the world and you just generally might want to have more control over your assets. It's a fundamental right 
that humans should be able to own and control their own assets. And this is something that uh, DOP will enable you to do. So if you want to use the protocol now, obviously mainnet isn't live, but you can use testnet tokens using the link in the description to complete the testnet requirements, which will also put you in line for an airdrop. They're airdropping 1% of the total token supply for early adopters and users of the testnet. So it's free to use. You just sign up using your wallet. You do a bunch of tasks like I showed you in last video. I've actually got to still complete a few more. Basically encrypting assets, sending assets, decrypting assets, following them on Twitter, etc. And you can qualify uh, for their airdrop. They do want to reward early adopters of the platform. So there's a link in the description to DOP if you want to use it out. Super cool application. And this is one I'm looking forward to using once their mainnet launches as well. So in today's video, I hope it gives you a bit of an insight into the dynamics behind the market. Lots happening. Flight to quality. Bitcoin's body TF. Lots of ETF talk with an ETF approval looking very likely. It's an exciting time for cryptocurrency. Don't do anything stupid and don't get too FOMO-y, um, but it is exciting. And I think it's great for the cryptocurrency market as a whole to get a bit of a reprieve here after what has been a pretty slow few months. Remember to subscribe to the Banter Plus channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.